This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 553, recorded on November 25th, 2022. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation. All for the Average Tech Guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. I spent most of the day outside. In fact, my son, Phil, is with me here tonight. We were supposed to have Samantha, Sammy, as we call her. She was not feeling well, and Phil said he would uh, jump in. But, Phil, pretty sweet two days here in Nebraska, right, getting outside? Yep, for sure. Yeah, lots of fires, uh, lot, lots to uh, lots of consuming think uh, the, the the traditional uh you know um thanksgiving meals we're going to talk about that here in a second but uh, of course we'll post a show with a few show notes not a ton but a few show notes out at the average guy dot tv big thanks to dave hamilton from mac geek gab who joined me two weeks ago i took the week off last week just in preparation for everything that was going on but dave's an awesome ga- guest hope to have him back in a lot all things mac if you haven't listened to that show yet Go back 552, go back to it, and uh, good stuff. Big thanks to Dave for coming on. Big thanks to our Patreon subscribers as well. If you're finding value, if you're not a Patreon subscriber, you're finding value in this, and uh, you want to give some value back, join us on Patreon, theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. I mentioned it earlier, Phil, my oldest, is with me. And uh, and Phil, welcome back. I'm, it's good, good to have you on here. It's always good to be here. I was kind of wondering what the dynamic was going to be as we had Sammy on. I wanted to catch up with her. We'll have to do, I told her we'd do another, we'll do another episode, maybe around Christmas time. Uh, She's feeling better. Catch up with some things. She's, you know, we bought her a new Mac. We, she's, I wanted to do these tasting strips that she's been, you know, this couple of months. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about those. So we'll get her um, back on. Um, for you and I, back in the uh, back in the summer, um, we we spent a little bit of time. You got a cherry tree in your yard, and uh, we we uh, you, not we, you picked some cherries, and then said, "Hey, bring some bourbon over and let's make some bourbon cherry or some cherry bourbon." And I I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical at first of you know I certainly those kinds of drinks go with vodka maybe or infusing in that way um uh, talk a little bit about the the process because this was kind of homemade you didn't we didn't i don't think you had any special equipment for it talk a little bit about the process that we did to and, and i've i've got the bottle i just took this is regular point writer bourbon and we just oh, there's a sticker on the back but we just added the cherries to it talk a little bit about the process so traditionally this is cherry bounce is what <clears throat> If you're going to Google it, um, it, I I technically cherry bounce can be made with technically anything. Um, but we decided to go the whiskey route. Um, like you said, it's traditionally done with, uh, vodka, but we did, uh, kind of went crazy this year, kind of take it, taking advantage of just the extra knowledge we had. Um, we had a better idea of the time frame on like picking the cherries and when you can, cause you get like a two week window where it's like that's the optimal picking time and then because at first some of them are just like just ripe enough to pick and then you have a whole bunch that still need more time and then the week after that you have some that are starting to go bad already and then a whole bunch of ripe ones so um we pick all the cherries pick as many as you need and then um it's essentially just figuring out like a a cherry to sugar ratio with how much of your spirit you're using so because the cherries you have are pretty bitter if you were yeah, going to go all, all natural they'd be pretty tart yeah, right they're pretty tart yeah. yeah so um we add sugar to kind of balance that out um and so there was even a little bit of trial and error with that because the traditional cherry bounce recipe that we had was for vodka and it worked pretty well for that <clears throat> so i actually i think i backed off on the sugar kind of think it hoping that like the bourbon would still be pretty prominent and the cherry flavor would just kind of mix in with it. I, I wasn't sure how that relationship was going to happen. Yeah. I didn't know if yeah. the cherries were going to overtake everything. If it was going to be like mostly just the whiskey you're tasting with a hint of cherry, like we didn't know. So 
Um, we threw some mixes together. We even tried. There was a handful of them. We just threw the cherries in, added the sugar, mixed it Trade, up, right? threw yeah. it on the shelf. And then, then we did a couple of batches where we cut the cherries up in half, cooked them with the sugar and a little bit of lemon juice until, like, until it started getting a little syrupy. Um, and then threw it in the whiskey and then bottled it, threw it on the shelf. And then we let it, we let those sit for about six months and then strained them, filtered them out. Bottom six, up. 614, 2022 yep. was when we bottled this one. Sugar light was the, was then you, you got one, you're showing a high West. Yeah. So this is the high West double rye. Um, most of us would agree this was probably one of the better ones, um, but they all came out pretty good. I would they say they did. This um, this point writer, by the way, we're going to talk about some bourbons here in just a second. But this point writer, I can get for like fourteen or fifteen dollars. It's a very inexpensive bourbon that we've really liked, um, and it's it's one we just kind of keep on the shelf for various things like this. If we like to make um, like uh, you know a Kentucky lemonade is kind of what we call it, a little bit of lemon lemonade mead and a point writer or something with a twist or whatever, right? It would just allows you to kind of have a bottle uh, around. Um, I, I think I bought, I had one and I bought one and brought it over uh, so we could do some mixes. The, um, the, it was literally when you were cooking these cherries down, it was just in a pan. I mean, we, it wasn't like we're using any special equipment to do this. No, you know, no, no, uh, special equipment, no measuring things, just kind of put some stuff together, measure, maybe measure out the sugar. Um, I had to pit all those cherries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That honestly was the hardest part of the cooked ones. Right. Yeah. But by by hand. Yeah. Yeah. And they, uh, the longer they sit on the, on the tree, if, if you don't like use any chemicals or like spray for them, they get worms in them. And so, um, some people get a little bit weird by that, but like, Honestly, once the batch is done, if you find worms in it, like it's sitting in 40% alcohol. So <laughs> like filter it out, it's going to be fine. Um, but when you're pitting the cherries, you get the opportunity to also like get rid of the worms. Um, so you're not cooking those too. <laughs> well, the, the, yeah, the, the timing on this was good. You know, this was June. We're out there. It's nice. June in Nebraska is great picking, putting these together and then setting them on the shelf. And I remember thinking like, you were like, yeah, we're going to drink these at Thanksgiving. And I was like, man, that's a long ways away. You know, well, Thanksgiving was yesterday and it was fun to have, I think we drank a lot more than we anticipated or that you, you maybe anticipate. Do you have any left? We did. Oh yeah. Okay. You do have some. some, Yeah. I think we got through about half of it, (laughs) which is a lot. (laughs) That's a lot. It was a lot. It was a good time. Um, yeah, and it was, it, you know what? It was more delicious. I, I, I mentioned this earlier. I was skeptical that bourbon would mix well. I don't know why. I yeah. used lemon. I do a lemon twist in a bourbon, and that's really delicious. So yeah. the tartness, the tartness of the cherries kinds of mm-hmm. works. You know, And if you listen to enough people talk about uh, whiskey tasting, especially with bourbon, like you'll hear, hear, hear uh, cherry notes get brought up all the time. Mm-hmm. So. That's where I didn't have any doubt about it complimenting it, but you know, the tart cherries, a lot of people use like the sweet cherries, yeah, um, like the bigger ones and the, like the darker ones, and they'll do those instead of the ones we had. But uh, it's like it's cool that it's just growing in my backyard, so yeah, yeah. figuring yeah. out like you know, especially if it's a if it's a home run recipe, like having that availability for free is is pretty sweet. So. For for someone who's not a bourbon fan, I would say it's a, it would be a great bourbon to to have them try because it's 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 not your the the tartness kind of masks a little bit of that bourbon. You can still you can still at least taste it. At least the ones I've been tasting. Yeah, and well, and the sugar does too. Sugar yeah. helps a lot. We we I was asking you last night about maybe that bringing the AB, uh, ABV down. Um, yeah, a, a little sure bit. It does. 40, I think point writer is 40. Uh, it's right at 40. So you would think maybe a five to 7% drop in that. Probably right if I had to guess. Yeah. Low thirties. Yeah. It maybe. has to between the amount of sugar that goes in there and you know, it's the a cherries, sugar bomb. It's a the, sugar bomb yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
but yeah. it's not like at the same time it's still not too sweet no I it's know. it's got a decent surprisingly it has a pretty decent balance so i also had the um advantage of you know i'm aging them here at the house and so every couple of months i crack them open and taste them and i think at about the three to four month window i added a little more sugar um and then actually i think a week after we made each batch um we went on i i picked them a little bit early probably like two or three days that earlier than I wanted to. And then we went on a trip. That's the reason I did it. Went on a trip when we came back, I found a whole bunch of like awesomely ripe cherries in this in the tree still. And so I went out there and picked a whole bunch. And then I added a bunch of extra cherries to all the mixtures. Um and so there was that and then the added sugar. And so I got to tweak it a little bit here and there and then experience it as it sits. And it, it basically with these it everybody says the longer the better so we could even let them go until christmas and we might have gotten a slightly different experience at that point too um but yeah the I think, the I think whiskey's not aging anymore but certainly the the it's flavor just the, yeah. just the maturation yeah, yeah i yeah. guess with the cherries and eh, yeah. yeah yeah no it was uh super delicious it got, it, it got me kind of thinking you know, this is the season, uh, it, bourbons are super hot right now. Like uh, they're just, they're on, you know, the, over the last couple of years, you know, everybody's drinking bourbon. And I've, when I've, when I've talked to about it to people, they, many folks just, there's so many now, so many choices. They just don't know what to do. You know, they yeah. like, ah, uh, you know, and it, it got me thinking, you know, one, um, you know, this is the season you know, you might be gi- gifting a bourbon to a friend that makes a great gift, right? Most, most really good bourbons are under 50 bucks. And that, that makes for, you know, 30 to 50 makes for a pretty reasonable gift. One of the things I've noticed is that, uh, fill our local wall to wall wine, uh, which is our big box, you know, liquor store. When I was out with Ed Sullivan in in Boston, New Hampshire has state run liquor stores. They're all gigantic, which is, Super great, but here in Nebraska, this was kind of our first really real big, big box. And the interesting thing is, is especially as we think about the Black Friday conversation, I actually enjoy going to Wall to Wall more. In it's the one store left I want to go to in person for some reason that I don't want to do online. It doesn't seem like the online alcohol sales have is a great experience, right? I mean, it's just not as good. What is it about going into the store? Do you think? I, I th- well, sometimes you develop relationships with some of the people that work there, um, and then they can help you pick stuff or like maybe clue you into some trends in the market that you, you're not aware of and stuff like that. Like if you're that interested, like right, which that's kind of the level that at least I'm at where I kind of pay attention to that stuff and. Um, I'm one that like I have a hard time narrowing it down to like three to five. Um, you know, I have I think I have like 40 bottles and it like within like my cabinet and like I keep my scotches down here next to my desk for some reason. But um, yeah, and it's just I, I like seeing like all the options and. Um, you'll go in there and certain things are marked down one day, a, a $50 bottle all of a sudden is 20 and you're like, Oh, hopping on that. Mm-hmm. And so, and you get to see stuff come and go. Um, they do like the, what's becoming super popular is the, the, the barrel picks. And so like these companies or the store have representatives that will go to the distillery and they will pick out a barrel an entire barrel and then they bottle all of it and then they have it there at the store. So like somebody picked that out obviously with a specific palette. Um, but they are also thinking about the consumer when they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you get different flavor profiles from that. A lot of times they're a little bit higher in the alcohol percentage. And so it feels a little more personal and a little more special. I mean, that's one of the fun parts too, because you know, every couple of months you go in there and they have a different set of picks and, 
they'll usually have like seven or eight of them available and they'll cycle through those and the regular stock will cycle. You'll see stuff one week that you didn't see the last. They have their case that's locked up where you'll see like your, um, your more special stuff pop up in there um, that goes really fast. Um, stuff like your Blantons and a lot of that Buffalo Trace stuff or mm-hmm. like the Elijah Craig barrel proofs are, uh, you know, they, they release those three times a year and there's, you know, I, those are cool. Cause somehow I keep finding them, but I like, I've seen one bottle of Blanton's like all year <laughs> when I would rather drink this any day of the week. But anyways, we have, we have one at our house. You can just always come over here. If you yeah, and that's, that's part of it too. Is like, I always know I have, like, if I want to compare it, like, that's honestly, that's the only yeah. reason yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's great to have around, like, comparing it. And, but, anyways, I, I've actually spent uh, some time thinking through, you know, I, 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 you know, went through a phase where I was buying a bunch and then I, st- I said, okay, <laughs> I can't drink these as fast as I was buying them. Right. And then I said, okay, I'm going to set a $20 limit on, on a bottle. And I thought that'll slow me down. Not a chance. Like <laughs> out at wall to wall, they're always running something pretty good for 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I was like, okay, I just need to stop going to the store. Cause yeah. that's the, like I get there and I'm like, well, I can't, I can't miss out on this fill yeah. in the blank on, on whatever it is. Yeah. It's just one of those things I've really enjoyed going. I just enjoy going to the store more than I, to me, the online shopping experience for, for, for bourbons, whiskeys, whatever it just isn't, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't know why I just, I, I prefer to go in person. Um, as we think about the holidays, uh, let's, let's think about maybe three to five recommendations as we're thinking about bourbons to try or bourbons to, for gifts. What do you think? What, what are some good ones that you'd kind of go with? Let's just say under 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to give a disclaimer where I like it one of the reasons I have a hard time with this is because I understand everybody's palate's going to be different. Everybody have, everybody has different responses to, you know, how high of the alcohol percentage is. Um, and then just like taste in general is so subjective. So I would say based on my experience with other people, um, what people say online, um, my own experiences with these things too. Um, it, there, there is still a ton of options that, uh, depending on what you got going on, what kind of money you want to spend. Um, also, like if you know that person is a whiskey enthusiast or like enjoys bourbon, um, then I think any one of like these five would probably be like they would be like that's like you you they would re- you'd get like brownie points or respect points or whatever for grabbing these. Um, having not known much about whiskey um but then to the average drinker they actually might come across uh pretty well so um one of my go-tos especially for comparisons and just like baseline stuff uh is maker's mark cask strength um you could even like add in just a basic maker's mark too like if you know you've got like a beginner beginner um but if you've got people that are like regularly drinking whiskey or like more regularly than the, the maker's cast strength is kind of hard to beat on a lot of levels because yeah. around here it's 35 bucks and it's spanking the pants off of like a lot of $60 whiskeys easy um 1792 good. hold on before you go oh, good, sure. good, yeah, go ahead. good presentation like it it's dipped dipped in red wax like lots of yeah. people know makers like it's mm-hmm. that's a good um that's a pretty good and that's a that's a line they've got they've i don't know five or six different you have to go in there and kind of look through you mm-hmm. know don't, don't always just go by price but a very a, a very nice presentation and most um i shouldn't say this most a lot of bars if you go and get an old-fashioned makers is what they'll is, is what they use just ask them what's your house you know what's your house bourbon and they'll they'll kind of let you know but makers gets used i think they're they're just regular version gets used a lot for that. So makes a good uh, makers makes a good gift. They, and yes, they do individually. They have people who dip those and individually dip them. Um, I, I was those, watching a YouTube video talking about 
dipping techniques for the they, there's a twist. There's a little twist yeah. in there. It's yeah, 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 yeah. kind of like when you're pouring too, to like keep it from dripping off the side. Like there's right, that whole, right. um, yeah, that's one of those like, you know, satisfying videos to watch, um, watching those guys on the line, just dipping those things. And like they're every two seconds, they're dipping a new bottle yeah, and yeah. it's, that's, kind I'd, of make cool. a, I'd make a um, and that's one of those too. Like I, I actually had a, um, I kind of I stayed away from makers for a long time because I thought it was just another Jack Daniels, um, which I'm coming around on Jack a little bit, but in a different thing. It, it's but uh, makers is definitely I'd say it is a pretty good quality product, um, and then they have multiple offerings now just besides their standard like mm-hmm. makers mark, and yeah. so the one of the good things to look at is like if you know you got somebody that is kind of knows a way around whiskey um go into like the makers 46 or like the makers cask, the cask strength like as those abvs start going up um then they're going to taste better to like a more experienced whiskey drinker if you got the beginner just go with the standard makers mm-hmm. um another one that's really really good i'd say just across the board is 1792 um it's pretty readily available around here anyways. Um, and I think across the country, it's, it's pretty readily, readily available too. Um, and then, uh, I would say that this one's a little bit harder to find, but, um, the, <laughs> the more time that passes, the more that I love this whiskey and it's tin cup, 10 year. So it sounds stupid, right? I just, I, the name tin cup to me just, but, uh, it's a harken back to, <clears throat> some type of labor force in Colorado and um, they would have these like tin cups on their bottles that they would, they would use. And so this whole um, homage to them um, and it's sourced whiskey too, if that means anything to anyone, but it's th- the alcohol percentage compared to most of the stuff I like is pretty low, but it's about 43%. I'd say on average, I'm usually like above 50 for what I enjoy. So that stuff just keeps surprising me about how flavorful it is for like how low that alcohol percentage is. And so um, th- that does run about 50 bucks. So like, but it's like, I, I actually don't mind paying 50 bucks for it. Cause it tastes so good. Um, but that's one that like, that might be a really good one for like beginners that, and then like, the, you got this little tin cup, thing that screws mm-hmm. onto the top that when you're done you got like this cool looking kind of rugged little shot glass and that's kind of fun too um yeah you, you surprised me with that one when you when you um a t-i-n tin cup when you uh when you brought it over and uh we tasted it then and then you said i'm gonna leave it and you're like if you want to have some i mean you can so i shared it i drank it once or a couple times with some other folks just to say hey have you tried this tin cup and it's a real, it's a cool bottle. I mean, it is a good, uh, it, it is, it's really tasty. And I think would be, would make a great gift. This is the one like. To almost anybody. Yeah. 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 If you're going to give it yeah. away, it's very, very, very palatable, very tasty, easy to drink. Gets you a little, you get a little, a little right. shot glass with it. So, yeah. yeah. And the, like the bottle itself, isn't the most flashy presentation. Um, the, the, the tin cup thing on the top is like the coolest thing about it. But what's inside is really what like the experience is. Um, so that stuff's really nice. I also really like uh, the Russell's Reserve Ten Year. Mm. Um, so that's a it's a wild turkey product. That's kind of like I wouldn't say rebranded. It's just like a different division. So it, it gives a little bit more of a different taste profile than like your standard like wild turkey. Um, some people have some reservations to wild turkey because like some years back it was kind of like the college party whiskey and everybody got kind of like fireball is now i would say um in a way which wild turkey is a little bit more hardcore so i guess i have a little more respect for those people but anyways um but yeah like don't i wouldn't unless you've had a bad experience and you got like a taste aversion thing or whatever's going on um don't shy away from wild turkey um wild turkey and russell's are super super high quality um, really just heavy hitters for their price range. Um, I would throw in like an additional option for like wild Turkey one oh one. A lot of times it's like 23 to 25 bucks. And 
um, I've watched a lot of videos where guys are doing blind sampling and like wild Turkey one Oh one comes out like in the top three, sometimes wins these blinds um, all the time. And it's a $23 bottle and it's beaten out, you know, 50, 60, $70 bottles of whiskey. Um, and you can sip it neat um, on ice. You can use it in like cocktails. Like it's really good. Like Swiss army knife whiskey if you don't have any issues with that taste profile. And so, um, shoot, other than that, I I think that's just four. Um, Cooper's craft 100 is pretty good. Um, that stuff is made by Brown Foreman who makes like Woodford and old Forester. Um, so the Cooper's craft 100 or the old Forester 100, um, are both pretty solid as well. Yeah, you got me the, for my birthday, you got me the 1910, the old Forster 1910 and 1920. Mm-hmm. And I think we, I think we unanimously, I think that the 1910 went out the day, super smoky, very delicious, a little over $50. That's, yeah, that's yeah. going to be one I'm going to keep. Yeah. That'll if be you, a keeper for me. If you like that kind of oak, kind of woody like smoky presence in it um then that's definitely the one that's i would say is is going to be the best uh the cooper's craft has that vibe a little bit it's not as aggressive on that those flavor profiles though so like it's a little more well balanced you get more of the caramel brown sugar standard bourbon stuff but it's just packed full of flavor yeah um and it's just a little bit more rounded out and balanced versus the 1910s pretty got a pretty good oak yeah you know old whiskey flavor to it i think i'll add one more and it's our it's it, for the beginner and it's our kind of this our is... house bourbon which is jefferson's and uh you know we, we we get 25 it's probably 35 in a lot of places uh but that's a good man you just can't go wrong it's an it comes in a really unique bottle uh it's it it's got thomas jefferson on the front so just remember jefferson's um, I got a couple bottles, empty bottles of it up here, and a couple different flavors. I, I, I would probably say they get some premium offerings that are pretty pricey. Uh, we kind of wait till we find those on good deals right now. Uh, I think now that we've drank more bourbons, uh, it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, yeah. you know, hmm. you know, their rye is ninety bucks. The, they've got one for one fifty. You kind of go, uh, right? Yeah, um, like the Jefferson Ocean is kind of a novelty thing. Yeah, yeah. And they, I think they, they there's floated some good, out at sea. There's some you know. good batches in there. Like they're good, but like I don't know if they're eighty dollars good mm-hmm. or ninety dollars good. Now, if you can find like a store pick single barrel of the Jefferson's Reserve for like fifty bucks, I'd say between besides just the standard forty percent ABV Jeffersons, I think that's those are the two that I would recommend. Yeah more than anything great starter good family bourbon like and if you're going to have a bunch of people trying it uh brian says i picked up a bottle of jefferson's with your recommendation haven't broken the seal yet but look forward to enjoying it yeah, yeah. and it's a in i'll be honest i mean my palate's changed over the last two years and yes. and you know it's it is um it's just a different it's a different flavor for me now and i i kind of go oh this would be good I've had some folks over who are like, Hey, I don't really drink bourbon as much. Okay. Try this one. Tell right. me what you think. It's smooth and buttery and, and kind of yep. delicious. And so it's a good, that's the, another good one I'll add to it. Well, it's, um, it's coming up on that time of the year. I know we're a tech show, but Phil and I have spent so much time thinking about talking about, and you know, um, 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 you know, drinking bourbon. So I thought it'd be a good, uh, during this holiday season, just maybe change up your gift giving a little bit. And for the, for a bourbon enthusiast, or even for one who's just getting into it, because a lot of folks are, there's some good recommendations right there. What else, Phil? I just wanted to throw in another comment before we switch topics. Yeah. Um, one of the things that is uh, like a big mindset for me that I always try to encourage everybody with, especially when it comes to whiskey, is just like always keeping an open mind. Um, not having biases and I, if you have, you've had bad experiences, you know, related to parties over drinking, like we, like we could totally get that. Um, but if not having an open mind is, I, I would say paramount. Um, and then the second thing is 
knowing that uh, what everybody's palate is different. Even your own palate is going to change over time or like one night to the next. You're going to experience sometimes a whiskey com- in a completely different way. Um, I've had whiskeys taste one way one night and then we try it again the next night and certain things affect that and then it tastes it, like it tastes different in a way. Um, and then the other thing I always encourage people to do, and it usually the, like, this is the best way to drink whiskey is sharing it with people. So, um, if you dive into the online whiskey world, those are the three things you're probably going to hear preached the most. And it like, it's kind of like a rejuvenation of like the whiskey culture or whatever you want to call it. Cause for a while it was a bunch of hotheads that it has to be 60% alcohol and it's got to be Pappy Van Winkle. Otherwise it's, it's crap. Um, and so we're trying to get away from that. Um, and so trying to get away from the assumptions and the judgments and the like figure, like we just want to figure out a way to get more people to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Right. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing, but at least give it a chance, like have an yeah. open mind. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's a, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing during the holidays in particular, because I, I think your palate can also be influenced by the environment around you. Right. And so, you know, you might be out hotel bar might be a good place to, if you look up on the shelf and they've got a few good, good bourbons up there. We, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, uh, this pizza place that we even go to, he's got a few good bourbons up there and you might even just ask like, what do you, what do you think? And, and you can do a pour there and, you know, oftentimes five to eight bucks a pour and, uh, you can try it out without committing anything, uh, which is a pretty great way to kind of a nice way to get it done. So give that a try some things to, to, uh, to consider over the holiday season. Um, uh, maybe, maybe it's time to visit, you know, if you're thinking about these things, this is Phil, one of the hardest parts I think for some is to go into a, you know, if you go into a store, liquor store, ask, say, what's your favorite? Like, what do you like? Um, get, or go in with somebody who, who, who knows and uh, get some recommendations um, from that. It just kind of works out better. This, like I said, it's one of the few things I like still like doing in person, <laughs> You know, I was just thinking today, I was like, mm, I wonder if I can get, get out to wall to wall, you know, today I'm like, no, I don't, I don't really need to, I don't really need to, I don't need to buy any more. Yeah. I think we've got plenty for a while, but, but, uh, give those a try. And there's some recommendations there for you. Um, every year we, uh, if you followed me on Facebook in years past, I haven't posted pictures like that in a while, but we do, we have, we have kind of smoked the Turkey on the grill. Uh, Mike Howard, uh, got me using the amazing smoking tube to get that done. And so for years I've been trying to kind of master that process of, of, you know, we make a tinfoil envelope for the Turkey. We do a bacon weave that we put on top. We mix it with, with, uh, Italian dressing and some Heinz 57 and all the various, you know, uh, all the various, uh, flavors that you want to put on there. A little beer, uh, this year, you know, he's put an apple in there and some garlic, and it always turns out, I think, pretty well. I think, Phil, I, I'm not sure you guys liked turkey, just to be honest with you, when you guys were younger. And then when we started making the turkey this way, I started getting the, oh, dad, this is this is really good. You know, do you, do you think do you think there's a switch there? I I can't say personally. Hmm. I don't remember ever having a time where I didn't. I wouldn't say that I didn't like turkey. Mm. Um, like I always ate it. Yeah. And so I don't remember ever not liking it. Uh, but I do know there was definitely a switch for like, <laughs> and it, it could have been a placebo, but I, I don't know it for it, what, we, 15 we years it. now, yeah. 15 years now, however long it's been, it's always good. Um, that, yeah, I would say the first time you did it, there was a definite switch in like, oh, there's something different going on here. Mm-hmm. Like this is yeah. next level. So it's it's been good. It's been really good. The first couple years I did it, it I didn't really, until I started Mark, having Mark Robson on the show, I didn't really understand the power of temp and having a good thermometer. And, and so mm-hmm. we used some, you know, just use some of the, the, the pop-up ones that came with it. And Mark got me thinking about temperature. 
Um, so a uh, couple years ago, I think last year for Christmas, two years before, two years ago, maybe Sarah bought me the meter, M E A T E R. It's a Wi Fi enabled or Bluetooth enabled temp on the tip and ambient temper on, temperature on the outside. Super fancy. They're like a hundred bucks, although it's Black Friday. Probably getting the 30% off right now today if you go buy one today. They're always running deals on those things on the app. I also bought, I think before that, I had bought the Weber iGrill. And it, I think it maybe even it was iGrill just before that. And then Weber bought them, I think, is, and incorporated them into the Weber family. So this year with the new Austin XL smoker, I wanted to do a traditional smoked turkey as well. Wasn't gonna do, wasn't gonna take a chance on a big turkey in the smoker and have it not turn out. Like that was not gonna happen. I can't, I can't. We had fourteen people over. I can't, uh, I can't have a bird going down and not have a backup. So we still did the traditional on the grill. Although I couldn't find, I was disappointed. I couldn't find my smoking tube. Oh, I brought it over to your house. I yeah, you've got my smoking tube. Yeah, okay. So I was looking for it. I was like, oh, so. It was awesome, even without the awesome smoking tube this year. Um, I'm not sure the way I cook it in the envelope. You know, I make this envelope of tin foil, bacon on top. I'm not sure smoke can penetrate all that bacon anyways. I think the bacon gets most of the smoke. By the way, I take that bacon off after it's cooked. I take the bacon off, separate it, then put it back on the grill and re-season the grill with that bacon. And we bring it in, and that's part of the hors d'oeuvres. We just have a bacon hors d'oeuvre, which is which is pretty tasty. Um, so this year with the Austin XL Pit Boss Austin XL, I went full smoke and uh, threw some garlic and an apple and some butter. And I bought a I bought a butter injector for ten bucks on Amazon, just a cheap one because I didn't know if this was going to work. And it's really weird to stick that in the bird and push it down and watch it swell up with butter and olive oil. Um, yeah, it was, it was a little weird to do it. Then, um, uh, just took a butter based, butter and oil basting on the outside. That's it. Little, maybe a little salt and pepper and put it right on the the grill. So it was really side by side comparison. Use the eye grill, uh, meat thermometer on the smoked Turkey, use the meter on the grilled Turkey, um, grilled went about an hour faster than the smoked smoked skin tasted that this is the whole i think the whole idea of smoking the bird is to get some crispy tasty you know get some smoke into that bird um uh and but both were great and were were great just god they're just handy to have and and i i i kind of wish i was i had both meters or both eye grill i got one or the other i gotta wait for one of them to break uh, before i go with the other but Phil, I uh, I cut those. The, the other the other thing I did differently this year is I bought a big long bone boning boning knife. I think is what they call it. It's just a it's kind of a flexible long knife that I use for that you can use for fish. And I got that and got it right next to, like for the for the breast meat right next to the bone and basically just got it all off the bone, it a whole breast. And then I put that on a you know, on the cutting tray. And instead of cutting with the bird, I cut against the grain basically is what I did. So I cut pieces. Then I, you know, I cut pieces off of it that way. I don't know if that made any difference. A couple of the videos I watched on YouTube is I was getting ready for this. Said That's the best way to catch a turkey is not off the turkey direct, but cut the meat off the bone and then, and then slice it. Uh, there was not any white meat left over at the end of the night, by the way, by the, by the time I went to put things away, both, could you, could you taste any difference between the two? Did you get, did, did you see, or did, did you notice at all? Um, so I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I could tell which one like you smoked, you put on the smoker. Um, and it definitely was, uh, pretty buttery. Yeah. Um, and it was really good. So like, Listen, like even that turkey would, like, I, I feel like would slay most people's turkey. Mm. Um, I'd be willing to bet that our turkey game is well above the, a majority of the population. Mm. Um, it's got to be. I, as much as I hear people complain about turkey and they're like, oh, him is better. And it's like, you haven't had good turkey then. Like, it just hasn't been done right. Um, and people are coming up with all kinds of crazy ways to cook them and fry them and, 
you know, they're dropping them in the deep fryers and starting grease fires and, you know, all that stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good, though. <laughs> but <laughs> I, good. we're, man, we're on to something. Like, you need to YouTube. You need to figure out a way to, like, make a mm, YouTube video yeah. out of, like, the way you cook a turkey. Make it, yeah. And I feel like if that got some steam, like... There's a lot of videos out there. I watched about 15 yeah. of them on smoking this. Uh, Bob gives me the right words. So he said, I made turkey medall- breast medallions. It's great. And so yes, I, that's what that, you call it. Assuming like that's the way you cut it. And that's like, that, is that what that means? Yeah. He says softer as you're not chewing against the grain. Okay. And, mm. um, and so, yeah, you you basically just take the breast meat off, set it down and then cut it. Interesting. Yeah that way it did it it did feel like it was pretty tender yeah right it was it definitely was not lacking you know juiciness by any means you're cutting the grain when you do it that way right because the the grain goes across the bird that way and so you're cutting against these kinds (laughs) of analytical thoughts are better when like i know beforehand like all the intricacies of like why those things are happening. So then I can pay attention yeah. to like, yeah. Oh, you do it this way more for like mouthfeel and you do it this way because it like, it, t- it changes this kind of type of taste profile. And, so, and I, I didn't know those things. Like I, I literally just went in knowing we always have good Turkey and um, the experience is going to be what it is. And I wasn't really paying attention to that kind of stuff. So yeah. well, they were, they were, they were both good. They were both good. Like the, the bacon crazy. one definitely yeah. had a little bit more of like that. Um, uh, I would say like, it was just a little bit more like rounded out and like the darker, richer flavors. And the other one was just soft and moist and buttery. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I think like, it was when, solid though. It was really good. When I, put it in the envelope you know there's italian dressing in there there's the grease drippings from the bacon Mm -hmm. it creates all this moisture and and i think it ups the temp around the turkey and so you get you know we're really careful to watch both the inside and the outside temp and i think that turkey was easier for me to cut just in general the legs came off a little bit easier the meat came apart a little bit easier deboning it at the end was a lot easier then the one I cooked on the on the on the smoker, little harder. It was still delicious. Don't get me wrong; it was still delicious. Um, but I made and then both of them I wrapped up. You know, I, it, the other thing is the the grill was done first, so I wrapped that up and put it in a cooler. You know, wrapped it in tin foil, wrapped it in in towels, put it in the cooler. Then an hour later, the grill one was done. So that the 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 or the smoker was done the grilled turkey sat in the 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 cooler for an extra hour as opposed to the one that was so that even that could have made a difference um in it um i i tell you what i i liked the i liked the grilled or the wrapped version of it better than i the, with the bacon than i liked the smoked this year i did two 12 pounders which was perfect for us. Like instead of one big 18 pound or whatever, 20 pound, my dad would always buy like 25 pounds. Um, he was crazy. And that's part but, of the problem too, right? Who, who was big, telling us, yeah. who was telling us that like the golden, like weight is like, like 15 pounds or 15, lighter or like, yeah, or was 15, it 16, something like yeah, that. Something and like I think that. that's where some people go wrong is they get it too big yeah. of a, too big of a turkey. Yeah, well, two 12 pounders is what we did, and that worked out great. And I, I put them on at seven. I probably didn't need to. I probably could have put them on at nine because we ate it like two. So, um, uh, really good. I think uh, if I, I have to think about it, I still may do one and the other next year, and maybe we'll pay more attention to which is which on the process or whatever. I was just afraid I was going to screw it up, but. The injector was a new, having one of those on hand is going to be handy to be able to, uh, to do that. I think if I do it over again, maybe I'd practice on a chicken like the, the day, day or two before, uh, give that a try. We also made jerky the day before, which was, which turned out really, really good. And so we, we lived pretty well, um, during Thanksgiving and it was pretty tasty. I, um, uh, uh, using both the eye grill, which is a cable it's a corded solution right just one temperature what's on the inside versus the meter a little bit cheaper not much though versus the meter which is completely um 
yeah, wireless, uh, but you get ambient and inside temperature. I, I, like I said, I think I'm going to break my eye grill so that I can get another meter <laughs> and, uh, and, and have those cause those are super handy. I can't. And I think we were saying this in the discord group as well. Uh, meter is just a great choice. A wait for black Friday or a deal on those. Cause they're, they tend to be a little pricey, but, uh, well worth having and a very delicious. We, Sent a lot of turkey home, and uh, there was a little bit left. Uh, I, I think I have some for lunch tomorrow, so that'll be uh, tasty as well. Um, Phil, in, after Thanksgiving dinner, we went out and you cleared half of my wood pile because we we did we always like to do cigars in a fire, and we drank all this awesome cherry um, whiskey. But I've been doing, you know, we cut a tree down. The neighbors, the neighbor and I share the fence, and we cut these trees down, and I had a lot of wood. And, um, so I've been doing a lot of hand splitting. Like, so I have, a, I have a, uh, an ax, you know, a hand ax. What would you call that? We'll just call it a hand ax for now. Hatchet. Hatchet. There we go. I have a hatchet and then, and I use it like I shouldn't. It's not made for this, but I take the hatchet and put it in the wood and then I take a sledgehammer and I just beat it down till the thing splits in half. It's the hatchet's not strong enough, nor am I in a lot of, a lot of ways to be able to hand, you know, um, uh, split this wood um you you got a lot of wood but you you've got a neighbor that's also got a pneumatic splitter right that's a big 20 20 20 ton splitter is that right uh i don't know i don't remember how much it is it it's pretty crazy it oh. it's a 1200 dollars splitter yeah um yeah, and it, it makes light work of some yeah. pretty big logs yeah pretty quickly i've been like, looking at those but i'm not gonna buy one like, like no, I've enjoyed, yeah. I've kind of enjoyed the, I kind of enjoyed the process of splitting the wood. Although there's been a couple moments where that ax has kind of flown a direction. You're like, yikes, you know, maybe I should be wearing some chaps or something to make <laughs> sure I don't to chip off the front of my kneecaps or something. <laughs> like that. Um, I have been looking at these, the, the, these splitters though. They're kind of, they're kind of cast iron or something where the circle on the top, circle on the bottom, that's got a splitter in between. And you can just take that wood and take a sledgehammer and just split it that way. That seems like, a, a, and they're, I don't know, 75, 100 bucks. Um, seems like that's maybe a little safer way to do it. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Is that, is, am I, am I cheating yeah. by going that route? No, nah, I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's basically like the, it's a more refined version of what you're already doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. and if, if you're, you're bound to determine to split wood that way and you don't want to buy a hydraulic splitter, um, then obviously like it can only accept certain sizes of logs, right? Yeah. Th that's another humongous benefit to the hydraulic splitter. Like we're taking, I'm picking up logs that are like, you know, it, it's a lot of work to get these things off the ground and get it onto the splitter and then you're splitting in half you're pulling one half off you're splitting the other half down into five six pieces do the next one um so obviously it just kind of depends i think with the size of wood that you're you're working with um something like that would probably be a little bit more advantageous um and more efficient because the the other thing too is like sometimes the hatchet gets stuck halfway down get a real tough piece of wood that isn't super dry yet and then you got to get that freaking thing out of there and that's that's a pain too so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pros and cons right what's the the, the live diminishing returns like how, how often you split in wood how fast are you going through it that like right that's the way the reason we have that splitter is because we've created this culture with our neighbors where we're doing fire pits all the time we have a fireplace in like all, all of our houses um, and so sometimes in the winter time that can save your gas bill a little bit. And so we kind of stock up because we're going through it so often. And so, uh, two of the guys went in on an expensive splitter and we all kind of share the workload and we've got a source that gives us a lot of wood for free and where that it's just, it, it, we're pretty lucky, honestly. Um, I just kind of walked into this situation when I moved in. Um, and I just try to put in as much legwork as I can helping fill their piles while I'm filling mine. And, yeah. 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 It's a good way to do it. Bob says, uh, Bob Carpenter in chat says, get a wedge 
there's some pretty interesting ones. And, and I do have an old wedge, uh, old, it's a uh, metal or whatever iron, probably it rusts. So it must be iron. And, um, it's a four-way splitter. And for a, for a full log, it actually works pretty well. Throw that, put that thing right in the middle. It not as handy, pretty heavy, not as handy for little pieces. This is where I like the hatchet. And by the way, uh, it, through this process, I realized there are wedges with handles that are designed to be hit with a sludge. And then this one is very clearly marked. It's not supposed to be, but I do it anyway. <laughs> right. I'm just, I'm just, let's, I'm going to destroy this thing. And then I'm going to get the right, I'm going to get the right equipment. It works well for what I do. I mean, I split a ton of wood with it. Um, and you know, um, Bob also says free home gym membership, doing it by hand, at least in the upper body. And yeah, I got a cramp today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was splitting this wood and I'll be a little sore tomorrow. Uh, and I've gone through two pairs of gloves doing it. It's, <laughs> it, it's one of the things I, the, the, the right hand on the set of gloves I have now, or I put uh, electric or not electrical tape, but duct tape around the, <laughs> the fingers, the thumb and the first two fingers, <laughs> because I've just wore through them, you know, with that wood and, hitting with the sludge and and some of those kinds of things and it's a hand sludge hammer it's not one of the big not one of the big ones it's a little four pound i think a little four pound sludge it's a pretty good system now that i'm good at it i kind of watch for you know um I, I look for the checks in the wood to know that okay that's probably going to be a weak spot in the wood anyway so I put the hatchet on it three or four times thing splits in half in one find way. the grain yeah. Yeah. That's another, another area where you find the grain. And, um, uh, Brian says, uh, out in chat, he says duct tape, the universal solution for everything. <laughs> yeah. It works pretty well. It works pretty well, Brian. I, I'm not going to lie. It's, a, it's, listen, I brought this brand new pair of gloves when I started this project with this tree, three trees in my neighbor's yard, right on the fence line, but on both our power lines, I paid my neighbor who's a tree guy just to come and cut them down. And there's a lot of wood left over. He said, can you just leave me some of the wood, right? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So that first pair of gloves, brand new pair of gloves, I wore through the thumb in the first day. And I'm like, well, okay, I'm not going to. So I just taped them up. Had mom help me get that done. Um, so well, have, so, heavier due to your glove. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Said you need some better gloves yeah. now. Better gloves. Better gloves. Maybe for Christmas. Maybe I'll put that on my Christmas. Really good gloves. You told us yesterday um, that you didn't want anything. Uh, you're you're right. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, don't. Um, I just go buy them anyways. Right. Well, so I have to look at that. I'll be honest. I look at that that ring splitter. You know, put the wood in, and like I could, like Bob's right. I could go with just a set of wedges, and then get the yeah. wood small enough to fit in that, and then just use that wedge. Or um, probably I be a lot safer. If uh, from the wedge standpoint, based on our experience with like the smaller one you have, that thing would get stuck all the time. Um, I think the longer it is and then the more spread out, like, especially if you have like one of those four way wedges, yeah. the, the bigger it is. And like the more travel distance you have at your disposal, I think the better it's going to work. Um, that, that four way wedge, so, it's small, but it's mighty. It does. It does a yeah. pretty nice job. We got that thing pretty good and stuck a couple of times. Yeah, though. I know. I know. We had to burn well, it out that one time. We did burn it out. <laughs> <laughs> we did burn it out that one time. Uh, it, I, I was finding a rhythm too in the way I hit it. So tap, 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 and you get it down, and then just a good. Ooh, my shoulder's a little sore. Um, <laughs> and then, and then just a good solid, you know, thrust at the end, and usually the wood splits apart. So I've I haven't gotten it stuck in a while, but I uh, I'm actually a little bit sore behind the shoulder blade today too. And like, I, I remember oh, saying, you were splitting wood for me last night. Uh, yeah. And I remember yeah. saying to Bree this morning, I'm like, why? I don't, what, like, why is that hurt? <laughs> like, and then for you just forget like, the things you do. Uh, yeah. And there's yeah, some, now, listen, there's some really good high tech axes too. Like, man, an axe just isn't an axe anymore. I mean, you go to the, 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 you know, the hardware store, man, they got some slick looking axes. And so, now, talk about you got to be safe with those things. You know, that go through a shoe in a, in a second. Yeah. So I don't know if I want to be out there swinging an axe. Now, you know? I think hitting something with a hammer is definitely a little bit more uh, accurate. Yeah. yeah. It's safer. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. So I, I was doing the Captain America thing though today. I would split it just <laughs> so there was a little bit left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pull them apart, it's, make I feel it's make fun. Feel um, uh, uh, just as we think about wrapping this up, just kind of on the way out here. Um, uh, today was Black Friday, and I did order the rest of the pieces that I need. I've been telling you guys for a while that I'm um, putting this VR build together. And so I picked up the case today, not any great deals on it, but they were good enough. I just, I wanted to get moving on this build. So I picked up the case. I got the Cooler Master HAF. I got, I ordered 128 gig of RAM. I just, uh, it was hard to pull the trigger on it, but I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to max this thing out from day one. I'm going to want it someday. Might as well do it now. And then um, I have the power supply. I guess I just got memory and um yeah, because I have so I have the board, CPU, case, memory, uh, power supply. I'm ready to go. So we'll start putting that build together. All that stuff will come in here this week, I think, and we'll start putting that together. Uyghur is on the show. Uh, oh, by the way, and I have, and I'll put it in the show notes. I've got a link to the parts picker, uh, PCPartsPicker.com. I've got a list for that. Here, I'll I'll share it in the chat for those listening here. If you want to go take a look at it all the parts i currently have um gpu is is left and then uh nvidia made the announcement that because uh, i was going to pick up a 30 uh 3060 ti and then they made an announcement that they're going to change their 3060 on the next rev and it's going to be an r6x or something like that and it's going to be even better than it was before and i was like oh well maybe i'll wait so I've been working with Ryan and Bob over at thinkcomputers.org to find the right time to pick up this GPU. I'm going to spend five or 600 bucks on it. I, I kind of want to make sure I get the right one. This is one thing I want to get. I don't want, I don't need to buy a 3080, but a 3070 might even be in the cards, but 3060 seems to be in the right price, right price point for me. So um, I'm going to be on thinkcomputers.org on December 7th. I think it's the this is the day I should I should know that, but in early December, um, uh, I'm going to be talking about Christmas stuff, Christmas gadgets. But I'm sure I'll have some questions for him as well. So I really just have a GPU to purchase that's left, and then we'll get that build done, and then I'll start consolidating things. So Black Friday was what I was waiting for. I thought maybe there'd be a few good deals. Maybe if I'd waited on the on the uh, SSD or on the um, NVMe hard drive probably could have got it for maybe 10 or 15 bucks cheaper, but that's okay. We got it done. Um, More updates next week. Uyghurs on, and hopefully I'll have some of these parts. So we'll spend some extended time talking about it on next week's show. So come back and join us. Um, Come back and join us next Thursday. Uh, It'll be Thursday this time instead of Friday. Come back and join us next Thursday. Phil, thanks for uh, thanks for filling in. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get Sammy back here. Maybe that Christmas week we'll get her on. Hope she's feeling better. She's got a cold that's kind of knocked her down all week. She was excited to be on, and then today I went up there and I'm like, "Hey, eight o'clock," and she was like, "Oh yeah, no, I can't even talk." So she'll she's coming back. But thanks for filling in. Yeah. On. <laughs> Honestly, we might have filled the hour with just the whiskey conversation. Oh, if I'd have let. <laughs> had she been on here. <laughs> oh, that's probably true. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, that's this. She's kind of, it's been interesting because she's kind of gotten into whiskey because of the influence. So, of, you know, before, I mean, just a couple of years ago, she probably wouldn't even drink wine. And, uh, and now she's in, she enjoys that with us. It is fun to have her enjoy it with us. I, I always enjoy that. So I'm glad she likes it. Well, with that, we are live every Thursday, except the Friday after Thanksgiving. We do this show here Friday, but we are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern out here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. Big, thank to our, big thanks to our Patreon subscribers. Uh, I mentioned if you want to join the Patreon group, theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon, $5 plan. Thanks. If, we, if we're adding value, uh, you know, that's one way to give it back. Appreciate doing that. Dave McCabe is coming the week after that. So Dave will be on. He's got some interesting things going on in his life. So we'll catch up with Dave on December 8th. 
Aaron Lawrence is coming back in kind of a pre-Christmas show. And then I have the 22nd open. I, I may I may put Sammy in that spot there uh, in December. Um, so come join us live Thursday nights. If you haven't been out here before, do it again. Everybody have a safe holiday weekend if you, or safe Christmas time. Don't go up on your roof and do lights and stuff. Be sa- I mean, you can if you want to. Just be safe. Thanks for coming out. If you're listening live, thanks for, for coming out. With that, we'll say goodbye.